we saw that something like x greater than four which could be graphed as this on a number line with an open circle or a parenthesis with everything to the right of four, everything greater than four shaded because the shading is the variable and uh, everything to the right of four uh, would be the variable being greater than four to the right of on the number line. We also learned that if we had X less than or equal to negative two, that would be either the filled in circle point or a square bracket with everything to the left being shaded, everything less than. And now these are both on the same number line. We saw in order to actually join two together, that's a union that is an or statement. So the fact that we see both of these together means that we are taking them both together. We're taking the union, we have an or. Here, if this said and instead of or, then actually it wouldn't exist at all. Why? Let's imagine. Let's imagine that we had an and statement. And is the overlap. X greater than four, X less than or equal to negative two has no overlap. So there would be no solution to the and statement. Whereas the or statement would exist, it would just be the two joined together, the union of both. We saw that from a graph, we can clearly take the endpoints and whether it's a parenthesis or a square bracket and use our infinities to indicate both directions forever. Infinities always take parentheses, and if we have two of these intervals and we want to take the union, we use the union symbol. So we connect disjoint uh, intervals with the union symbol. Let's go ahead and solve a compound inequality expressed as an or statement. So X minus two is less than or equal to five or one half X is greater than six. First step is gonna to be to solve each of these individually and then come back around and figure out what the or means for the problem. So over here, X minus two is less than or equal to five. We can add two to both sides. 
we get x is less than or equal to 7. Over here, 1 half x is greater than 6. We can multiply both sides by 2. Multiplying by the reciprocal gets rid of the fraction. 2 over 1 is the reciprocal of 1 half. That just leaves us with x is greater than 12. The or statement is going to take our two individual lines. If we had 6 and we had 12, sorry, 7 and 12 on the number line less than or equal to seven. Would be that. Greater than 12 would be that. Or is a union. That's both of them together. And what would this be in interval notation then? Well, we would have parenthesis negative infinity with an endpoint of seven square bracket. We're joining it with this other interval. So remember we use the union symbol and the other one is gonna be a parenthesis 12 to infinity. And that's gonna be how we solve an or inequality. Let's do another. One fourth y less than negative one or three plus y greater than or equal to five. Let's solve them both and then come back and deal with the fact that or is a union. To get rid of multiplying by one fourth, we would multiply both sides by the reciprocal four. So y is less than negative one times four is negative four. Over here, subtract three from both sides. Y is greater than or equal to two. negative four, positive two, less than negative four, greater than positive two. The or statement is both of them together. So they both make it on to the final answer. negative infinity to negative four with a parenthesis, union square bracket two to infinity. Let's go ahead and do an and statement now, yay. So much fun. Math is fun and exciting and the problems are oh so delighting. Let's take a look at negative one fourth T less than two. And this is gonna be an intersection and 0 
t greater than or equal to 1.3. Decimals and fractions, seriously. Okay. It's okay, we can handle it. Getting rid of dividing by negative one fourth, we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal. That would be multiplying both sides by negative four. Excuse me. And once we actually do multiply both sides by negative, that's going to switch it from a less than to a greater than. Two times negative four is negative eight. We're just left with the T on the left. Over here, 0 0.52T greater than 1.3. We'll go ahead and divide both sides by 0 0.52. If you get your calculator, I know you don't want to do it by hand. I don't want to do it by hand either. So we're not going to. Um, one. 0.3 divided by 0.52 equals exactly 2.5. That's what the book said it would be. I didn't trust it. I should have trusted it. So we have T is greater than or equal to 2.5 and t is greater than negative eight. So if we had negative eight, positive 2.5, greater than or equal to 2.5 would be that, greater than negative eight would be this. The intersection is the overlap. The overlap happens here. So just greater than or equal to Now, sometimes we can see inequalities joined together and written in this form. We saw things like this um, last time we were together. It can be in this form before we solve them as well. Let's say we had five is less than negative two X plus seven is less than or equal to 11. This actually represents an and statement of these two different uh, inequalities. And if you don't see the two different inequalities right now, this might help. There's the second one. If I get rid of the entire left side, then the middle becomes the new left and the right stays the right. Negative two X plus seven, less than or equal to 11. The other one's what happens when I get rid of the right. The middle becomes the new right. Five is less than negative two X plus seven. So 
So this is an and statement that joins both of these. And so let's just play out the and, and then we'll come back and we'll play out the three part without changing anything. Seems like a good plan. If I subtract seven from both sides, negative two X is less than or equal to four. Divide both sides by negative two. X switch this uh, inequality greater than or equal to negative two. Over here. Subtract seven from both sides. Negative two is less than negative two X. Divide both sides by negative two. Negative two divided by negative two is positive one. Dividing by the negative means we switch the sign. And there's the X. This would be the same as X and one, if we switch the sides, the X keeps the little point. Pac-Man's mouth opens towards the one. So we have X is less than one and X is greater than or equal to negative two. And statement is the overlap. So if we think of the number line, negative two, positive one, we would have less than one. We would have greater than or equal to negative two. And our answer would be the overlap. Our answer would be between negative two and one with a square bracket on the negative two and a parenthesis on the one. That's the long way, splitting it up into two, dealing with the and statement. There's a shortcut of sorts that's gonna get us to the same answer. And it's just leaving it together. Instead of solving that one and then solving that one and using our strategy of whatever we do on one side, we do on the other, trying to get X on one side, let's get X in the middle. And whatever we do in the middle, we do on both of the other sides. So to get the X by itself, we gotta get the negative two X by itself. We got to get rid of plus seven. We do that with minus seven. Whatever we do in the middle, we have to do everywhere. All three sides, left, middle, right. That just leaves negative two X in the middle. 11 minus seven is four. Five minus seven is negative two. To get the X by itself, we have to get rid of multiplying by negative two. So we divide by negative two. Whatever we do in the middle, we do everywhere. Since we divided by negative two, things switch. The less thans become greater thans. Less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. Negative two divided by negative two is positive one. Four divided by negative two is negative two. Now, before I do anything else, I wanna take a look at what happened here. When things are written like this, a three-part inequality, we use less thans. And because we use less than, because for instance, one is less than two is less than three. That works because the one is less than the three. 
So it kind of has this transitive property. We want the least thing on the left, the greater thing on the right. Negative two is less than four. That's why we can use less than, less than. Five is less than 11. That's why we can use less than, less than. But here, once we divide both sides by negative two, there's a positive one on the left and a negative two on the right. Well, one is not less than negative two. But guess what? The same time that that happened, the same time that became untrue, was the same time we divided everything by negative two, which switches the inequality signs, which means everything's okay again. Because now, if we swap everything the way we do when we bring the signs with it, the negative two can come over here, the positive one can go over there, and the point stays with the negative two. The big end stays with the X. Likewise over here, the big end goes with the one, the point stays with the X. If you want to imagine, I took this answer, stuck a stake in it, and then spun it around. Everything flips. Negative two, point, big end, X, point, big end, one. Everything flipped. It wasn't just changing the sign. Once we did that, it was greater than, greater than, and we don't write things like that. So we got to switch it. Got to stick a stake in it and flip it around. And look, now the or equal to is over here, the regular is over there. What would this be? It would be x between a negative 2 and a positive 1, with the or equal to being a square bracket on the left, the no or equal to being a parenthesis on the right. Same answer that we got. Maybe even easier because we didn't have to go through the number line to figure out how to write this as an interval. We can see our two endpoints. The smallest is negative two, the largest is one. Square bracket, no square bracket. Okay. Let's look at another. Negative 16 is less than or equal to negative 3y minus 4 is less than 2. Whatever we do in the middle, we have to do to both sides. We want to get the y by itself, which means we need to get the negative 3y by itself. We need to get rid of the minus 4. We do that with plus 4. And we do it on all three parts. Negative 16 plus 4 is negative 12. We just have our minus 3y in the middle. 2 plus 4 is 6. Next, divide all parts by negative 3. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4. Since we divided by negative 3, we got to switch the inequality signs. y in the middle. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2 there. We no longer have the least thing on the left with less thans. We want to 
switch everything around so we can have that. So copying it this way, we have our negative two first. The point goes towards the negative two, big N towards the Y. And then the less than or equal to points at the Y with the big end having a four. If you wanna see it on the graph, you can. Between negative two and four, no or equal to, yes or equal to, and we shade in the middle. In other words, negative two to four, parenthesis on the left, square bracket on the right. Let's complicate it up. What's the best way of complicating something? Fraction. Two is greater than or equal to P minus two over negative three is greater than or equal to negative one. So this is odd, maybe at first, that we see that it's a compound inequality but it's not given with the least on the left and the greatest on the right. But guess what? The very first thing we're gonna do is multiply all sides by negative three. And that's gonna fix it in the very next step. So nothing to worry about. In order to get the P by itself, we gotta get the P minus two by itself. We gotta undo dividing by negative three. So we're gonna multiply all sides by negative three. So two times negative three, this middle thing times negative three, the negative one times negative three, and since we're multiplying all things by negative three, that's gonna switch the inequalities around. And that should take care of our weirdness from the beginning. Negative three times two is negative six. We just have the P minus two in the center. Negative three times negative one is positive three. And yep, everything looks good now. If we add two everywhere, negative six plus two is negative four, is less than or equal to P, is less than or equal to positive five. So in square brackets, we have the endpoints negative four and positive five. Not so bad. Let's go ahead and do one more. Eight is greater than T plus four over negative two is greater than negative five. Same sort of deal. We wanna get the T by itself. So we gotta get the T plus four by itself. We've gotta undo dividing by negative two. And we're gonna do that with multiplying by negative two everywhere. Eight times negative two is negative 16. Switch the sign. T plus four in the middle, switch the sign. Negative five times negative two is positive 10. So why does that work? It's because we are multiplying everything 
by negative two. Negative two times eight. Negative two times negative five. Negative two times the middle cancels those out. Just leaves us with the T plus four. Since we're multiplying by a negative number, that switches these signs. Now to get the T by itself, subtract four everywhere. That gives me negative 20 on the left, T in the middle, and six on the right. This would be parentheses around the endpoints, negative 20 and six. What does this mean? Well, these two vertical bars recall mean absolute value. And in short, taking the absolute value of a number gives us the positive version of the number. So the absolute value of negative three would equal three. The absolute value of positive four would be the positive version of what's inside, positive four. So it doesn't take the opposite. It doesn't change negative into positive and positive into negative. It always makes it positive. So negatives become positive, positives stay positive. And the absolute value of zero is itself zero. So notice what that means is that an absolute value can never be negative because the absolute value of negatives and positives are both positive. And the only other option, if it's not negative and if it's not positive, it must be zero. The absolute value of zero is zero. So an absolute value can never be negative. That's because an absolute value represents a specific distance. And remember that that distance is the distance to zero. So an absolute value of a number just means how far is it on a number line from that number to zero. And if we think of our number line, The distance from negative three to zero is three. The distance from three to zero is three. And that's why the absolute value of negative three is three. And it's why the absolute value of positive three is three. We can't have a negative distance. When we say how far is it from here to here, we would count one, two, Three, three units. So why am I bringing all of this up? Well, today's lesson is gonna be on absolute value equations. In other words, equations that contain absolute values in them. So let's say we had something very simple like this. The absolute value of X is three. Well, when we started talking about solving equations, before we looked at the process, we looked at simple ones where we could guess. 
And if we had X plus one equals three, we would be able to guess that X must be two because two plus one is three. And then we verified that we could have a process to do that called solving the equation. We can subtract one from both sides and get X equals two that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's do the same sort of thing here with the absolute value. If the absolute value of something is three, then that something can either be positive three itself or x equals negative three. In other words, the thing inside could be three because the absolute value of three is three, but the thing inside could also be negative three because the absolute value of negative three is three. And this is gonna be our strategy, how we think about solving these absolute value problems. What if I said, let's solve the absolute value of X equals eight? Well, then our strategy is gonna to be to split it into two equations. Either the thing inside is equal to the positive eight or the thing inside is equal to the negative eight. Okay, not so bad. Not so bad. So what do I do when it's not so bad? I go ahead and I make it harder. Let's say we had the absolute value of W minus two equals 12. Well, the thing inside is either equal to 12 or negative 12 because the absolute value of 12 is 12. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. So that's two equations, either the thing inside equals 12 or the thing inside W minus two is negative 12. And then we can solve both of these. I can add two to both sides of this one and get W equals 14. I can add two to both sides of this one and get W equals negative 12 plus two is negative 10. So in order for this equation to be true, either W equals 14 or W equals negative 10. And just because we say or doesn't mean you're right if you say this one or you're right if you say that one. The correct answer needs both of these Because what is or? Or is a union. That means the correct solution set would bring this one and this one in because it's uh, the union. Everything from one with everything from the other. And would not be a correct thing to say here because and when we're talking about connecting answers is an intersection and that would be an overlap. There is no overlap between the single point 14 and the single point negative 10. So we would say or because we want both. I know that's counterintuitive. You're thinking you want both of them, we should say and, but in math, when you want both, you say or. And means where it overlaps. 
So the solution set, we can say the whole statement w equals 14 or w equals negative 10, or we can express it as a set with elements 14 and negative 10. And that's the same as if we would say negative 10 and 14, because in a set, order doesn't matter. This isn't an ordered pair. It's just a set with two things in it. And order doesn't matter. Just like with regular equations, you could also check your work. Um, so if I wanted to make sure both of these answers are in fact correct, I can go ahead and plug in and check. So for W equals 14, that would be the absolute value of 14 minus 2 equals 12 which would be the absolute value of 12 equals 12, which checks. Over here, I can check W equals negative 10. Negative 10 minus 2 is negative 12. The absolute value of negative 12 is positive 12. So that one checks as well. Okay, so this is different. This isn't W minus two in the absolute value. This is just the absolute value of W minus two equals 12. Well, let's take a look at this. If our end goal is to solve for W, with an absolute value, we've only done examples where we have the absolute value equals something else. And that's what we want. We can't do anything with this until we get it. Absolute value equals something else. Then we can play our game, split it into the two equations. But we can't do it like this because the absolute value is not by itself yet. So. How would we approach this? How would we get the absolute value by itself? We can get rid of minus two with adding two to both sides. This gives us the absolute value of W equals 14, which means our two equations W, the stuff inside, is either equal to the positive 14 or W, the stuff inside, is equal to the opposite, negative 14. Because the absolute value of 14 is 14 and the absolute value of negative 14 is 14. As a solution set, you just take those two values and put it in a set. Remember, order doesn't matter. The only thing about a set is we wouldn't list the same thing twice. Once it's in the set, it is in the set. Okay, let's keep playing the isolate the variable game. What if we have two times the absolute value of X plus 32 equals 20? Well, again, just like we were solving for X, if we wanna get the absolute value of X by itself, 
we would need to get two times the absolute value by itself. So we would need to get rid of plus 32. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 32 from both sides. I'm left with two times the absolute value of X on the left, on the right. 20 minus 32 is negative 12. And at this point, it's not impossible that you might see the answer. I'm going to keep going, though. In order to get the absolute value by itself, I need to get rid of multiplying by 2. That means I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That's going to leave me with the absolute value of x on the left, and it's going to leave me with negative 12 divided by 2, negative 6 on the right. Do you see the answer? Do you think it's 6 and negative 6, or 6 or negative 6? That wouldn't be correct. If you don't believe me, go ahead and plug 6 in. The absolute value of 6 is 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. Remember, I made a point of saying an absolute value can never be negative. Since an absolute value can't be negative, there's no solution. The answer is the empty set. Either this zero with the line through it or a literal empty set because we can't solve this. There is no solution. There is no real number X that the absolute value is negative six. No solution. I'm going to take another look. Another example. Let's look at the absolute value of z plus 8 minus 3 equals negative 3. So just like our other examples, what do we do first? We want to get the absolute value by itself. So we need to get rid of minus 3, and we can do that with adding 3 to both sides. That'll leave us with the absolute value of z plus 8 on the left. It'll leave us with 0 on the right. What does it mean when we have zero on the other side? Normally, if we had a positive number here, the stuff inside would either equal that positive number or the stuff inside would equal the negative uh, version of that number. But what is the number that the absolute value of is zero? The stuff inside here, z plus 8, must be zero because the absolute value of zero is zero. Subtract eight from both sides. Z equals negative eight. One answer only set containing one element if you needed to write it as a set. We can check our answer if we plug negative 8 in. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. 0 minus 3 is in fact negative 3. 
So it checks. Here's another one. So watch out for things that might happen trying to trip us up. If we want to get the absolute value by itself, we need to get rid of times two. So I'm going to divide both sides by two. That just leaves me with the absolute value of three minus two T on the left and six divided by two is three on the right. We can split this into two problems, either the stuff inside, so either three minus two T is equal to three because the absolute value of three is three, or the stuff inside three minus two T is equal to negative three because the absolute value of negative three is three. So to finish this off, we need to solve both of these. I'm going to give myself more room. That was our original problem. And we have worked it down to 3 minus 2t equals 3. 3 minus 2t equals negative 3. So I'm just copying that stuff, giving us more room to work. Solving here. To get the t by itself, we need to get the minus 2t by itself. That minus is attached to the 2. So to get that by itself, we have to get rid of this 3 out front. And that three is being added on because it's positive. So we subtract three from both sides. That leaves us with negative two T equals zero. And if I just keep going, dividing both sides by negative two gives T equals zero. Over here, same thing, subtract three from both sides. That leaves us with negative two T, three minus three cancels out. Negative three minus three is negative six. Divide both sides by negative two and we get T equals Negative six divided by negative two is positive three. If we check both of these in the original, they will work. If T is zero, then this is three minus two times zero, three minus zero, that's all just three. Absolute value of three is three and two times three is six. So that one checks. We plug three in, three minus two times three, three minus six, three minus six is negative three. The absolute value of negative three is positive three, two times positive three is positive six. So if you can visualize doing your order of operations, you can check in your head or you could actually physically write it all out. If you have the time, uh, do whatever you want to check your answer, um, either in your head or by hand. But you got to get to your answer using the algebra. You can't just look at it and go, oh, I think it's zero. Oh, I think it's three. Oh, I think it's zero and three. Um, 
you have to be able to do the work. Let's look at another. Two equals the absolute value of 7w minus 3 outside the absolute value plus 8. Hey, watch out for things that are trying to trip you up. If I want to get the absolute value by itself, I have to get rid of plus 8. I do that by subtracting 8. I do that on both sides. That means that I have the absolute value of 7w minus 3 equals 2 minus 8, negative 6, right there. An absolute value cannot equal a negative number. So no solution. Or the empty set. Where you can write it literally an empty set. If you miss that fact and instead you set up the stuff inside is equal to six or negative six, the checking your answer is going to be what makes you realize you've done something wrong. So if I didn't notice that this was absolute value equals negative and instead did 7w minus 3 equals 6, 7w minus 3 negative 6, solve those both, get w equals two numbers. Neither of those numbers would work, which is why we are encouraged to check our answers. Uh, normally it's a step I don't mind skipping, but if we're involved with absolute value signs, if we're involved with a square root sign, uh, it's always uh, better to check because that's where a lot of things um, might pop up as answers that don't actually work. And sometimes it's not a matter of you missed something. Sometimes the checking is the only way to find out that it doesn't work. If you looked at this problem, absolute value of w minus 2 minus 3 equals negative 1, and you went no solution, I have tricked you by making you think that I was tricking you. No solution is wrong here. And you might go, wait a minute, you said if it equals a negative, this equals negative 1. The absolute value does not equal negative 1 here because the absolute value is not by itself. We would have to add three to both sides to get the absolute value by itself. And negative one plus three is positive two. So there is a solution. Either W minus two is two or W minus two is negative two. Add two to both sides, w equals four, or add two to both sides, w equals zero. So w equals four, or w equals zero, and both of those check. If we plug four in, four minus two is two, absolute value, of uh, 2 is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. If I plug the 0 in, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Positive 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 
So zero and four are our solutions. So be careful when you have that equals a negative, make sure it's actually the absolute value itself that equals the negative and there's not things that can move around first. <laughs> 